Hey everyone, this is David Wallman from Wallman Photography, and I'm out here on a road trip um, across the U.S. actually, and so I'm in Connecticut, um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about living out of your car, or at least car camping, uh, for extended periods of time. So I'm going to cover things like space and layout uh, in your car as to um, storage and just how to lay stuff out, because um, it's a very small space to live out of, um, so there's certain ways to do it. Two, I'm going to talk about uh, privacy and like where to park because um, that's a big question for most people. Three, I'm going to talk very briefly about foods. Uh, and then four, I'm going to talk about hygiene. Um, so first, let's start with space and layout. Um, I cannot completely stretch out in my car uh, with just a, a normal car. Putting the seats down, uh, it's a little tight. So here's what actually I do. I'm in a Subaru Forester, um, but you can find a wealth of knowledge online as to different people who build platforms, um, storage ways, um, plywood boards, etc. Um, what I did is I wanted the headspace, so I didn't build a platform. So what I did is with the seats down, that space behind the passenger seat, um, uh, with that space included and the seat pushed forward a little bit, I can completely stretch out. But my head would flop in that space if there wasn't some support there. So what I did is I measured out that space uh, and I got two Tupperware bins that are that height um, that my pad goes on top of and that way I can completely stretch out here on the passenger side. Um, um, and that's, that's really nice to be able to stretch out when you're sleeping. I wouldn't suggest uh, forfeiting that uh, or sacrificing that luxury. Um, so, uh, and those two bins I use for food uh, and then also cosmetic stuff, so I'll get to that. Um, here on the driver's side uh, would normally be storage. Now, because I'm on this road trip, um, all this stuff wouldn't normally be here, so just ignore this. This is all for the installs I'm doing. Um, so normally I would store stuff here on the right side, different um, bins, some of my bags, um, maybe some clothes, stuff like that. Um, um, and, and my clothes would normally actually be hanging, uh, not here, <laughs> um, so I'll get to that in a moment. Um, so normally I would have all this be storage space. Um, as far as the clothes hanging, I have a um, just a rod of wood hanging between the two handles um, behind the seat, and so normally my clothes would be hanging there behind my driver's seat um, uh, on, on that pole. Um, and then my, my clothes are actually behind my driver's seat as well. I have those little Tupperware bins, like the ones you would use for cold cereal, um, and that's how I organize my clothes, because um, they fit nicely there. Um, so I have one for underwear and socks, one for uh, t-shirts, one for pants, and I forget what the fourth one's for. But um, I would say that be organized when you're living out of your car. It's pretty important that you stay organized. Um, so. Uh, for me, that's not a huge problem. I'm fairly organized to begin with, but you don't have a lot of space to get messy in. Um, so keep things pretty organized. Um, so clothes there behind the driver's seat, um, behind the left-hand passenger seat. I already mentioned um, the two bins. Um, in the center uh, of the back seat is where I have a little like trash can bin with a laundry clothes um, bag stuck in it. Um, and that's where I put dirty clothes, uh, and I keep my um, soap. Uh, uh, detergent pods uh, and dryer sheets in there um, and so when you're on the road stop at laundry mats for uh, washing clothes so I keep that in the center as far as the front seats I really don't put a lot up there I have stuff up there right now only because I need them some of my different tools and stuff for installs um, so I have some stuff there but um, Technically, that's all storage space as well. Um, also, for storage space, I'd highly suggest you get a roof cargo rack. Um, it's been super helpful for me to store extra stuff in, gets it out of the car. For me, I don't put anything up there that could be damaged by condensation, uh, weather, etc., temperature. Um, so all my camping gear is up there, all my stoves, tents, um, that kind of stuff. Sleeping bag stays in the car, but um, all that kind of stuff I keep up there for the most part. Um, also, get one that's lockable. That's pretty important as well so that people don't mess with your stuff when you're out gallivanting on a trail or camping or stuff like that. Um, so that's basically kind of the layout as far as space. Um, if you want to find more stuff, go online, check out Pinterest. People have built different platforms that are really cool. You can slide stuff under. Um, for me, I wanted the headspace though because I can sit up in my car basically. Uh, it makes things like changing and stuff easier. Um, so two, let's talk about privacy and parking. Um, there's, really, there's a few places you can park. Um, this is kind of the big question for most people. Um, first of all, you can park, um, you can find a back road somewhere that's not private property. 
Um, here, let me say this first. When you're parking somewhere, it is okay to sleep in your car. There's nothing wrong with sleeping in your car. It is your possession. But where you park your car and the laws as to, you know, staying overnight and stuff um, is something you could get in trouble for. So uh, there's nothing illegal, as best I understand, uh, or I've heard from any of the lawyers or research. There's nothing wrong with sleeping in your car, but make sure you park your car legally. Um, so you could find a back road on like a national forest road or something. That's normally not a problem. Um, and you could try to stay secluded. Um, you do stand out a lot if someone finds you, though. Um, you could play on the opposite spectrum. You could uh, stay uh, where you blend in, um, which actually I would suggest probably the most. Um, so either two, lo two locations in the city. Um, residence areas where there's constantly cars parked along the street. Don't park right in front of someone's house. It's a little creepy uh, and they might get suspicious, but if you park like around the corner or on the side of their house or uh, in front of a church or, you know, something like that, um, normally people aren't very suspicious when there's tons of cars lining. So you just kind of blend in. Um, option two with that is parking lots. Um, some parking lots might be suspicious. Um, I don't park near the storefront. I park on the outskirts. Um, you can find online and there's different apps. Most, I shouldn't say most, lots of Walmarts um, actually have a policy where they'll let you stay as long as it's one night and you're out of, like on the outskirts or they'll say like on the south side or um, something like that. So check out that as well. Um, honestly, I've been on the road now for almost a month. Um, it's not super difficult, and there's only been a few times where I've had difficulty finding a spot to camp for the night. Um, when you first start out, let me tell you, you'll be paranoid. Every car that passes by, you're going to think is a cop or something. You're going to, but um, now I just, I just go to sleep. <laughs> um, you'll get used to it. Um, speaking of which, um, curtains. Um, what I have, I've seen different people do different methods um, for curtains and stuff, um, but. Um, I hung, hung some paracord string so it's less permanent, um, and I just use binder clips to clip on some black fabric, um, blackout fabric from Walmart, um, on the sides and along the front, um, and that, that creates my sleeping space, changing space, etc. Um, and from the outside, especially at night, it just looks like really dark tinted windows. Um, so that's what I do. Also. Another suggestion for you is for my back window. Um, you could just do a curtain, but I actually, if you cut up these reflective sunshades, um, let go. If you cut up these reflective sunshades and cut them to shape, they fit in the windows nicely. Um, I spray painted mine black so that they don't look super obvious. Um, and it slides up, up here. And then I have it Velcroed on. I'm not sure I would actually suggest. <laughs> I've had so much issue with the Velcro um, sticking. I need to find a better way to do it because um, it doesn't doesn't stick to the glass for whatever reason. Um, be it the heat or something, it just never sticks. Um, but cutting those to shape works really well because it's nice and flush and so it stays out of your way. Um, so that's another option and then other people have found different ways as well. Um, so that's kind of curtains and privacy. Um, I lock my doors at night from the inside. I use the clicker. Um, to lock my doors. Uh, one time that I didn't, I had someone uh, open the door and start messing with my stuff, and thankfully I woke up and was like, hey, and he was, left me alone. But um, I would suggest locking your doors um, at night um, and just keep the keys nearby. I actually hang it on the, the clip that my clothes would be hung on. That way I can reach it from right from my bed if I need it. Um, and I, I hang stuff um, from that clip as well using carabiners, um, headlamps, and little stuff as well. Um, so that's been nice. Um, dealing with, with parking and stuff, I've not had too many issues with people um, stopping by or knocking on the windows. I've never had anyone, uh, a citizen, uh, knock on the windows or anything, aside from that one guy that was messing with my stuff. Um, as far as cops, I've only had one interaction, and he was super friendly, and he was just checking on me. Um, I just I parked in a place that kind of stood out, and he was just like, hey, making sure you're all right type thing. Um, and then I've parked in two mall security places. Uh, one time the mall security was very nice and understanding, but said I couldn't stay there. Um, but it was a higher end mall. And the other time, uh, the guy was just like, Hey, I'll let you sleep. Just wanted to make sure you're okay. Um, so keep in mind, like for the most part, like the police are not out to get you. They're there for your safety. They want to make sure you're not a nuisance. Don't do anything illegal. Um, um, but most of the time, if, if you stand out, they may check on you or knock on the window and say, like, hey, what you doing? Um, and I just tell them, tell them the truth. <laughs> hey, I'm passing through, needed a place to crash, um, doing installs, etc., and they, they're fine about it. Um, 
so don't be super scared of the police. My heart was pitter-pattering the first time that they knocked on my window, but um, it's okay. They're there for you. Um, I'd actually rather they be there than not, because then the guys messing with my car, you know, whatever. Um, so that's kind of privacy and parking. Food. Um, pretty self-explanatory. You can't have a lot of non-perishable or a lot of perishable stuff, so dairy um, and stuff that needs to stay cold um, doesn't work super well unless you get one of those fridges, but even that just is a hassle because the car has to be running and stuff like that. So um, I get all stuff that I can cook on a little stove um, or use with boiling water, so lots of um, pastas, um, different soups like the Campbell soups that pop off. Those are really simple and nice. Um, mac and cheese, stuff like that that like mixes and boils is really easy um, as far as, uh, and then fruit, I get fruit as well because um, that doesn't normally need to be refrigerated or something. Um, I normally only buy what I need for like a week at a time, A, because there's not a lot of space, and two, it just lasts, lasts better for things like fruit. Um, and so um, you can eat pretty well. You could eat out. I wouldn't suggest it, budget and financially wise, it gets really expensive. Um, so don't do that, <laughs> at least unless you're super filthy rich. I'm not. So um, I make all my own food. As far as a stove, I just have a little propane stove. Um, doesn't draw a lot of attention to itself, doesn't take up a lot of space, and uh, it, it performs everything I need, and I keep that in this top storage roof with all my camping stuff. Um, so that's food. Fourth, hygiene. Um, let's cover that real quick. Kind of the biggest question with living out of your car is showering. Um, there's a few options. Um, a, if you have like a gym membership, um, you could go to a gym uh, and shower there at their, their restrooms. Um, normally you can't do one-off, like you can't just walk in and be like, can I take a shower? Um, normally they require a membership. Some gyms I've heard, I've never tried this, but some gyms will maybe let you test it out and so you can get a workout in and then go shower or something. Um, haven't used that option. Um, truck stops, sometimes they're open to the public, sometimes just for truckers. My advice against this is they're pretty expensive, um, so I've never actually used them. I've investigated and went to use them and then was like, holy cow, I'm not, not paying this for a shower. Um, so that's another option. Um, other options are things like couchsurfing.com. Find people that you can stay with, stay with friends, uh, and shower there. Um, you get one of the shower bags uh, for camping, fill it with water, put it in the sun, hang it on a tree, shower there. Um, word on that, use biodegradable soaps and shampoos. Don't hurt our environment. Um, and uh, so that's an option. As for me, what I do primarily um, is two things. A, I use dry shampoo. Um, there's, you could buy dry shampoo. I haven't liked the dry shampoos I've bought. They normally leave my hair feeling weird and sticky. Um, the best thing I've, I've personally found and what I use the most is a recipe I found online uh, of a ratio between organic uh, cornstarch and cocoa powder. Um, the cocoa powder is literally just for darkening it. Um, but the organic cornstarch works really well. Rub it into your hair. It takes away all the oils, but it's not like damaging the hair. I actually like the way my hair has been better since I haven't been shampooing it so often. Um, I feel like I have healthier hair. But the problem with that is it gets everywhere, so make sure you brush it out, clean it out, because um, that'll get all over your pillow and stuff, or even your, the, your clothes. Um, so just a word of cautioning. Um, but that works really well. I have good healthy hair. It's not oily all the time. Uh, I can still use hair gels and stuff, uh, or wear a hat. <laughs> um, uh, so that's an option for that. As far as cleaning your body, um, there's a few options. Um, somehow my family got hooked on these Norwex claws, um, which is a brand of products um, that are is amazing it's all based around it's like a super high fiber count of microfiber or something cleans super well even when i'm at home i haven't used soap or body wash for like the last two years um, because these work so well uh, they're literally meant for cleaning um, and so literally i can just get it wet and wipe down um, do a thorough wipe down and that literally cleans off dead skin cells bad bo etc they work amazing um, that's called norwex um, the other option is baby wipes. You thought they were only for babies, but you're wrong. Um, cleaning up with baby wipes is actually quite uh, common, and you will find that you love baby wipes a lot uh, if you live out of your car. <laughs> so um, I do that quite a lot as well for cleaning up. Um, you can get them scented or not. Um, 
So there's different options there, but baby wipes uh, are another option for getting clean uh, when you don't have the time to do a full, full kind of clean down. Make sure you have deodorants, um, both spray and not. Um, helps for smelling, smelling better when you're out actually in public <laughs> uh, and not on the trail. Um, so that's an option as well. Going to the bathroom, honestly, it's not that hard for me. If I'm out in the wilderness, I'm a guy, I can, I can just go to the bathroom. Um, but most of the time I'm passing through cities or something, you pass rest areas, you can stop at Walmarts and Targets, and you know if you stop at a Starbucks or food, um, use the bathrooms there, uh, not a huge problem. Brushing your teeth, also not a huge problem. I brush my teeth every day and every morning living out in my car. Um, I have water, I have toothbrush, and I have toothpaste. Um, pretty self-explanatory, um, so also not an issue. Honestly, overall, living out of your car is a lot more feasible than you might think. Um, I think when you first kind of start thinking about it, it's like, oh, this is crazy. Um, honestly, it's really nice to simplify everything. You don't have a ton of stuff, um, and you kind of feel you're free to kind of roam, <laughs> which is really nice for me. Um, to, to be near trails and parks, um, to go camping, uh, and not always have to have one route location that you're traveling from. Um, so for me, it's, it's been actually really enjoyable. Um, the only thing I would say hasn't been enjoyable is the heat, uh, in a few places that have been really hot, uh, and like sweaty at night. Um, that's not very enjoyable, although I did get a or I brought a fan with me, um, which I'm super glad I brought. Just one of those little like desk fans. Um, and I plugged in that in at night. Um, actually, that reminds me, bonus tip, fifth, um, electronics. Um, I have little power packs um, that I use for different electronic stuff. Um, I have a Pulsey Bluff battery pack that I use actually mostly for my strobes and stuff, my photography, but I also have this charge tech um, battery pack that I just got, and I've been really pleased with it, um, but it's got full power, and I can charge laptops and, um, outlets off of that, um, I also stop, when I stop at coffee shops and stuff, I'll charge there, um, also get a power inverter for your cigarette plugs, uh, and you can charge stuff while you're driving, um, either way, point being, I have a power bank, um, and so I use that for the fan, um, and that's been a small detail that makes a big difference. Um, otherwise, honestly, like I said, living in your car is pretty great, um, and certainly living on the wild side, not normal. Uh, there's times where certainly it's like, man, I just wish I could just go home and shower right now. Um, but you wake up the next, excuse me, you wake up the next morning and you're pretty excited to be out on the road. So, um, yeah, yeah, I would say that's, that's pretty much living in a car. If you have questions, I'd love to answer them if possible. Um, so feel free to drop a comment below or direct message me or um, visit my website or something like that and get a hold of me that way. I'd love to be of help. Um, but for now, I'm going to sign off and uh, feel free to ask questions. Subscribe, please. And uh, hopefully more videos uh, with photography, outdoor stuff, and just words of wisdom on life uh, will be coming your way later. So thanks very much for watching and have a great one.